Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate this movie poster in Photoshop. So we're going to cover quite a few things in this tutorial from gradient maps to vector masks to typography and also adding grunge. If you want to follow along, in the description of this video, I included all the assets that you need, as well as a link to the original movie poster. All right, let's get started. All right, let's go to File, New, and we're going to make a movie poster, and the width is going to be 2,000 pixels, and the height is going to be 3,000 pixels. You can leave the resolution at 144. We want to be RGB, 8-bit is fine and let's hit create all right next i want to create a guide layout so we're going to go to view new guide layout and i want it well all these settings are already set so i'm just going to go back to default and we'll start again so for columns i want four i don't want any width or gutter so i'm going to delete that for rows again i don't want any gutter but i want six and then i do want a margin I want a 100 top margin, sorry, a 110 top margin, a 100 left margin, a 110 bottom, and a 100 right. So that's what I want. Let's hit OK. Next, I'm going to do File, Place Embedded. We're going to pull in our background. So let's go ahead, place that. Hit OK. Next, I want to create the white frame around it. So to do that, I'm going to use my rounded rectangle tool. I want to make sure it's on path, not shape. And let's make the radius 100 pixels. All right, and then I'm going to start in the center here. Click Start Dragging. And then after I've started dragging, I'm going to hold down Option so that it's making my shape from that center point. And we'll just snap it to these guides that I made. I'm going to switch to my path selection tool here and then right mouse and click on create a vector mask. So there you go. We now have our vector mask on there. Next thing we can do is add our gradient map. So let's go here, go to gradient map. And I want to click on this. And what that's going to do is it's going to clip this to that layer so that it's not affecting the background. Just not really making any difference here, but it will once I start changing these colors. All right, so let's click in here. The first color we're going to do here is going to be 0, C, 4, C, 4, 1. All right, so it's kind of a aqua green tealish color. Let's hit OK. And then the next one is going to be 4, 5, D, C, D, E. So basically a much brighter and slightly bluer version of that same color. So let's hit OK and let's hit OK. And you can see here if I hold down Option, here it's affecting the background, now it's not. So that's what that little thing does. It's the same as clipping a layer here, which you can do by holding Option between the two layers. All right, next, let's go to File, Place Embedded. We're gonna pull in the guitar, and let's make this 56. I'm gonna drag this down so it's just peeking over right there, and I want it to be centered, so just using that right there. And then let's place the anchor point up here. So I'm going to do that by holding Option and clicking right there. Perfect. And then I'm just going to rotate the guitar a little bit so that my center down here is also centered. So that's about right. I think I might just want to go to 55.5. And let's hit OK. All right, next I want to create the drop shadow for my guitar. Now, 
Um, if you look at the original poster, you'll see that it's not just a drop shadow. It kind of is a faded 45 degree. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to hold down command, click on my guitar. That's going to make a selection. I'm going to create a new layer, drag this under the guitar, and then go here to edit, fill, and I want to fill it with black. So let's hit OK. And then I want to deselect. Deselect is Command D. So let's do Command D. All right, and we're going to call this Shadow. All right, let's go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. I want to set this to 45 degrees. And I want the distance to be not that much. Let's say 50 pixels. Hit OK. You can see it did it a bit, but I need more. All right, so let's go ahead and repeat that motion blur. I'm going to do that a few times here until our motion blur is a lot more evident. All right, and let's make a copy of that. And that's about how strong I want it here, but not really up there. Let's go ahead and add a mask to this top one. I'm going to go on my brush tool and just with a soft brush that's relatively large and I can control the brush size by holding down control and option and dragging left and right. With black as my color, I'm just going to paint out this side of the shadow. And do the same with this. Like that. Perfect. Okay, and then we can just group these together. And let's put the guitar in there too. And we'll call this group guitar. Okay, next I'm going to pull in some grunge. So I'm going to select my background here and go File, Place Embedded. And I'm going to pull in Nuclear Grunge 16. And let's just turn this like so, make it bigger. And I'm going to clip that and put it on Soft Light. Actually, let's put it on Multiply and just take down the opacity. I also want to add in a, just a dark gradient from the top here. So I'm going to go in my gradient tool, make sure it's on foreground to transparent and linear, and then make sure my foreground color is black. I'll make a new layer and we'll call this top gradient. And just starting from the top here, go down and then take the opacity on that down to maybe 50%. Something like that looks good. All right, and then I need a bit of a canvas texture um, across the whole thing. So what I'll do is go to the very top of my layer stack, do place embedded, and I'm gonna use Nuclear Grunge 38 for this. Let's just turn that and size it up and I want it to be a little bit lighter than this so I'm going to do image adjustment curves which is command M I'm going to make the whole thing a bit brighter like this and then go in and just pull that blue back a bit so it's a little bit yellower as well maybe just a little bit redder as well And I'm pretty happy with that. Let's hit OK, and let's put this on Multiply. All right, so now we're ready to start putting on some of the typography. Oh, actually, one thing before we jump onto the type is on the guitar, I want to add just a layer of sharpness to it. So it's already a smart object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Filter, 
sharpen, unsharp mask. And let's just look right here. All right, let's do 85.5. I think that looks pretty nice. Let's hit okay. We can see a before and after. That's just adding that crispiness to that guitar. And I'm pretty happy with that. All right, now to the typography. So first let's add the text to the left side here. Um, let's go to our type tool and for this, we're going to do, this is an Adobe font, so if you don't have it, you can download it. It's Active Grotesque Condensed Light. So if you don't have it, click right here. That's going to bring you to Adobe Fonts. Search for the font, which is Akiv Grotesque. Right, let's type that in. Oh, hang on, I typed it wrong. It's A K T I V. And there it is. And then go in and look at the family. Find the font that you want. Activate it by clicking on this. And then when you go back into Photoshop, that font will be activated. All right, so we want that. And I want it to be 93 and we're going to make it white and uh, right aligned. And I want this letting to be at 104 and this to be at minus 20. So that those are the settings that we want. I'm going to just click here and we'll type in first word here. And what we'll do is just, if you go to the asset folder, you'll see that there's actually a little uh, text document in there and it's called names. So let's go ahead and open that document. And you'll see some fake names here. And we're just going to copy this command C, go back into Photoshop and then command V. And that's going to paste all the names there. And now we're going to make these the right size. And that looks pretty nice. Just move that a little bit to about there, maybe up a bit. So right about there, that looks good. And then if I hold down Option and just drag here, what it's going to do is it's going to make a copy of that layer. And then if I go back to the Type tool, I can switch my alignment there. And just drag this, I want this to be on the other side here. And then let's go back to our text document. We'll copy these names. Go back on our text tool, Command A to select all, and then Command V to paste. And then this one, we're going to move it down to there. Perfect. All right, next we're going to add a little sensational up here. Let's go back on our type tool. And for the sensational, we're going to use a font called Canida Gothic. Oh, make sure you're not the, uh, don't have a type layer selected. So let's go to select, deselect layers. Then when I go back to my type tool, I can change this without worrying that it's typing something. So let's start typing here. Just going to write sensational 
exclamation point, unquote. And we can actually, rather than adjusting the font size here, notice, okay, so notice if I put this at 50 point, and then I do Command-T for transform and make this bigger. All right, so let's say I want to make it, oops, I want to make it about that big. And I hit OK. You see now how it's updated the point size. It didn't used to do that in earlier versions of Photoshop. So you'd always have to be careful about um, changing the size of the type using the font here rather than transform. But with the later versions of um, Photoshop, it's quite smart about that and it'll automatically adjust your font size here. So nice. Nice addition to Photoshop there. All right, so that looks good, sensational. And then we'll just write um, a little text underneath. So I'm going to just drag this with holding down Option rather than creating a new uh, type layer. I'll just start with this. OK, so I've made my uh, text change, but now I want to make my font change. So I'm going to use American typewriter here. And I don't want the filter on. And we'll just use bold. And I want to make it all caps. So I can do that here, this double T. And then I want to make this significantly smaller. So probably yeah around 10 points and we'll drag that to just under the statement there maybe i want both of these bigger so i can hold down shift so that both layers are selected then do command t for free transform and then just make both of these a bit bigger like that and then with the deadline hollywood i want to change the color of the type to kind of a lighter version of this. So I'm just selecting that color and then dragging my selector up here so it's a lighter version. And then I can do option delete with that layer selected to color the whole layer that color there. All right, and then for these two names, I actually think thin is a little too thin. So let's go here and change that to light. I'm happier with that, that I think is the right weight there. All right, next we're going to do the titling here. So if you look at the original uh, poster, you'll see where it says Echo in the Canyon. It's a little more designed. So let's play around with that. So I'm going to start a new type layer. So let's deselect my current layer and then change this to a font called Moderno. And we're going to use semi bold. So compress semi bold. And we're going to set it to 300. Well, let's start at 150 and we'll take it from there. All right, so now we're going to do all lowercase. Oh, let's turn this off here. And also, let's make this white. OK, so that looks good for the echo. And then I'm going to just hold down Shift again. And that would be Canyon. Now I'm going to change this. I'm going to call it Chew on the Canyon. So it'll be Chew here. And let's line these two up. So they're pretty close together like that. And then we need to add the on the here. So I'm again just option dragging this. And we'll do on the now for on the let's do transform here make it a little smaller um, I really want to collapse the letting so I can do that here I can also do that with a shortcut which is 
Option and then the up arrow key. Uh, for PC, I guess it would be the um, Alt and then up arrow key. So that's how I want them lined up. So that's good. And now for the size, I want them to be about the size of the top of Chu. So here and the bottom lined up. So something like that. And let's put that there. So that looks pretty good. And now what I want to do is size all three of them up. So I'm going to take all these three layers that make up the title and just size those up to about right there. Good. And then what I want to do is take this, we'll make one more copy of this layer again, just take the layer, start dragging, hold down option, that'll make a copy. Here we're going to write a documentary, add some spaces by Andy Warhol, you can add whatever name you want, and then we'll just transform make this smaller I'm going to make the a documentary fit under here and then I'll resize the rest accordingly so about there looks good and then I can add some more spaces there like that I think I probably want this at minus 15 That looks pretty good. All right. Next, we're going to add that little tagline here. So again, option drag. And let's type it. The birth of the crayon sound. All right. This, we're going to select all and make it right aligned. And we'll put that over here on the right. I want to right align it with this text here and then make it a bit bigger. And then just increase that letting, which I'm doing again by holding Option and this time pushing the Down key. And left and right adjust the tracking between the letters and then up and down adjusts the letting between lines of text. So there you go. And I want this to be a lighter color of this. So I'm just going to select that color up here and then option delete. That's a little too dark. So let's just go in here and manually make that a little lighter option delete. So now that's that color. All right, last two things we're going to do is add a logo here. So let's do file place embedded and you'll see a film festival logo we're just gonna hit okay there place that down here and i want to make the soundtrack available this same color so how i can do that this is all one layer is i can simply make a box like this add a new layer and just fill a box like this with the color that I want it to be. And then using the clipping mask, because this bottom layer has transparency, it'll retain that transparency and just transfer the color onto the layer below. So that's a nice little trick there. All right, next file, place embedded. You're going to see the film credits. We're going to do the same thing. Place that down here. like so and I actually want all of this to be that color so I can in this case just do solid color it's gonna make it my foreground color and then I can clip this to that and then if I want to change this color all I have to do is double click this 
and then I can change the color of this text. Okay, last thing is I actually want some of my paper texture to be on top of all these uh, text layers. So what I can do is I can take all my text and go Command G and we'll call this titling. So that's all my titling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this nuclear grunge layer, hold down Option so I'm making a copy, put it above and then clip this to this group. So now what it's doing is it's using the transparency of this group to determine where this goes. And now on this layer, I can change the opacity to 50%. So now what it's doing is it's putting 50% of that texture on top of only my lettering, not affecting the background. A great little trick there to get less texture in one place than another. And there you have it. Let's turn off our guides. Uh, yeah, in not such a long a time, we created an entire movie poster from scratch. Pretty amazing, guys. Give yourselves a hand. That's how you create that poster in Photoshop. I hope you learned some new tips and tricks for using Photoshop. And if you like this video, please leave a like, uh, subscribe, share, leave a comment. I do try to answer all of them. And if you would like to get my Photoshop starter kit, which is free, I have included a link for that in the description of this video. Otherwise, here are some other videos that you can check out. And I'll see you next time.